Chicago. Wake up. Sheriff Breaker! Agent Anderson. Is that really you? Sorry, this place likes to play tricks. Sheriff Breaker? What happened to you? How did you end up in the dark place? I was brought here. Snatched away from the morgue by a man named Orland Dorr. Been trying to piece it together for... Well, it feels like a long time now. Who is this door person? He's here. Somewhere. I've been seeing his face in my dreams for years. <laughs> this whole thing is insane. But he is much more than he seems. He's connected to all of this. I need to get to Parliament Tower Plaza. Do you have any idea where it is? This place, it's like trying to find your way around in a dream. I've been trying to map it, but it keeps looping, shifting. Like, there are many versions stacked on top of each other. There is a page. It describes Dor finding his way through this place. I tried to follow the steps, but... No luck. Can I see that page, Tim? Of course. In fact, it's the page I tried to give you back in the morgue in Bright Falls. Huh. Now that I think about it, maybe Dor brought me here to keep you from reading it. Here. This fucking dude just got trapped, and he, now he's all casual. I fucking love it. I'm gonna keep looking for Dor. The closer I get, the closer I feel to waking up. I need to find the man behind the curtain. Warland Dorr walked across the rain-slicked tiles of Caldera Street Plaza. He stopped at the door to the construction yard. A poster for his talk show hung there. He stepped through, willing it to take him to Parliament Tower Plaza. I know what I need to do. The door to Parliament Tower Plaza was at the construction yard. Warland Dorr walked across the rain-slicked tiles of Caldera Street Plaza. The rain didn't seem to touch him. He sensed his steps were being observed, documented into the story. He allowed it, this one time for this one reason, to be passed on by his unwilling disciple to read at the right time. The ocean that was the dark place took the shape of New York City, drawn for the mind of Alan Wake, in part for the writer to navigate his prison in part to torment him as he struggled to find his way out. Dor was not bound by the rules as Wake was. He came and went as he pleased. For now, Dor entertained the writer's fantasy for a purpose known only to him. At the edge of the plaza, he stopped at the door to the construction yard. A poster for his talk show hung there, another part of Wake's fiction. He stepped through, willing it to take him to Parliament Tower Plaza.
This is the first time I've seen a page about Warlandor. Who is he? A door that stands between two rooms is in both. A door that can lead anywhere is everywhere. That door is the center. He governs the currents of reality. With all the powers mixed up in this, it's hard to know who's playing who. Opening too many doors... This isn't important right now. I can look into it later. The page describes him moving through the door. How can I hear that? The dark place has many faces, and many names. It is a mirror, reflecting all possible realities. The family of doors have the power to shift between these realities. Here, and elsewhere. If I can find a way to navigate through this nightmare, maybe I can find a way to get back home. Alright, construction site. Where is it? Over here? Still, man. Ooh. I made it. I need to get up to the street and find that statue. Give me the battery. Give me the battery. All right. Enough already. Here we go. There's the shoe box. kind of bullet shining with light how did the clicker get here from Washington Hold on. 
How did you know the clicker would be there? This is important. Alan's lost. He doesn't have the ending. He needs your help to finish the story. How am I supposed to help him from here? Okay. I'm in the dark place. Wake is in Washington. I could talk to him in overlaps before. My mind place is more powerful than I ever knew. Alan. We need to talk about the ending. Saga. What is this? My mind place. I've reached out to you like this before. But I understand more about it now. You see a visions too. I used to think they were ideas, inspiration, but they're real. Just like this now. I try to use them to make the story come true. So this is coming from both of us. Maybe that's how we could communicate in the overlaps. We could use this to stop Scratch. First, I need the ending. <sighs> So there's a problem with the ending? I don't have the ending. It has to be perfect, but I don't have time to figure it out. I don't know what to do. Fuck. I'm so sorry. This whole thing is a fucking mess. I agree. But we can still figure this out. And what exactly does perfect mean? The elements of the ending need to come from the story's pre-existing parts. To make matters worse, this is a horror story. You don't need to tell me this is a horror story. Right. The ending has to fit the genre if it's going to work. In a horror story, there are only victims and monsters. There must be a way to bring a hero into the story. If there is a hero, they will ultimately pay a heavy price. I can't let the horror story take Logan and Casey. They were dragged into this. They need to survive. Non-negotiable. Not just them. We need to try to save everyone. I have an idea how to help Casey. He's a real person who I twisted into a character. He isn't my creation, so he isn't a suitable host for the Dark Presence. I can write that into the ending to drive that fucking thing out of it. So the ending has to be earned, set up by the story. You can't build a case without supporting evidence. That's the only way to make it stick. Well, if the ending has to fit the story, this is how I see it. Return is a story about a story that comes true. And I'm a character in the story. Not just a character. The hero. Okay, a hero. <laughs> in any case, I've been through hell to be here. And this is my life. It feels earned to me that I rise above the story and be there to create the ending. Yes. That's what we're doing. Here, now. We're figuring out the ending I need to write. This isn't Scratch's ending. But this isn't your ending either. This is our ending. You aren't the only one deciding these things anymore. You're right. I can't do this alone. Every time I write, things only get worse. You beat this thing back in 2010, Alan. And here you are doing the same again. You're a hero too. We're in this together. Then let's bring it home. The ending will have to be dark, no matter what. The more people we save, the greater the cost, and the hero must pay the price. One of the heroes. The scales always need to balance. 
Fuck it. Let's go with this. Are you sure? There's no time for anything better. Scratch could be here any second. Then that's our ending. I have the clicker. I'll find a way to get it to you. And I'll get the pages down. See you on the other side. I need to retrace my steps back to Caldera's Troy Plaza. I arrived in the dark place through the fountain. Maybe I can leave that way too. The ending we talked about. I have the clicker. And the bullet of light. Let's do this. I have to be the one to do it. I feel like I've always been on this journey. Okay. It must end here. This darkness. What lies under the surface now shifts. A play of shadows catching my eye, thrusting my face into the water. He's here. It's shockingly cold. Past the mirror of the surface. <laughs> Is it too easy? 
What if this is still the dark place, another dream to wake up from, always coming back to the beginning? The memory of what came before burned away by this terrible realization. Maybe it's a mercy, forgetting, to know nothing when we loop around, back to the... Okay, so that's a pretty solid fucking ending, honestly, if I do say so myself. And there we go, we got the Platinum Trophy. Um, so my completion rate is pretty much done at this point. Not really, because I'm going to more than likely return to this game and play through it again a, a second time in the future. Um, I only have a few minutes to talk because there is a mid credit scene that does play that I missed some of it and I kind of want to watch it and see what what plays out, um, I'll put the, uh, um, actually, no, I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna talk, I'm gonna say what I need to say, um, I fucking love this game, man, this is honestly probably one of my favorite games of the year that I've played through, um, very different than everything else that I've played, the story is just the biggest mindfuck ever, um, yeah, and it just, wrapping my head around everything the way it all works it's just it's gonna take i feel a while before i like actually appreciate this game and understand what the story itself was trying to tell me um but yeah i mean it, it, it this was such a unique and amazing interesting experience that I, I went out and I bought the OG Alan Wake the remastered version and I'm going to be doing a playthrough for that as well Maybe not right away. I might need like a week of just doing other videos like Zelda videos to be honest uh, before I return back to it because um, Yeah, I mean I've been editing videos for this game for the past like five weeks straight and I'm kind of tired and burnt out at this point, but nevertheless, I'm fucking happy that you know i i made it here and i got all of this done i you know I, I wanted to fit all of this into one video and um i mean there's a part of me that kind of still wants to try to see if i could fit these the last video and this one into one video but um for now i'm just okay with this splitting the finale up into two parts uh i think that was a satisfying enough finale honestly and um I, yeah, I just am really excited and looking forward to the DLC and all of that extra stuff that's coming out because that stuff is going to, um, just be an even bigger mind trip. You know, this game really makes me want to go back and play through the first Alan Wake game, which I'm going to do, and then it makes me want to play through pretty much everything else that... Remedy Games has done, you know, the only other two games that they've done after that <coughs> in their little connected universe is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> shit, uh, Quantic Break, or I think Quantum Break, yeah, Quantum Break, and, um, Control, I really want to play through those games now, I also really want to play through Max Payne, but I think I would rather wait until the remasters come out for those, um, but, as a standalone experience, this game is just, it's in its own league, you know, it is honestly, like, I could praise this game to the fucking moon, like, how much I love it, you know, it, it, there's so much crazy shit in this game, and it is quite the experience, I will say, um, especially when you're playing it at night in the dark and stuff, and you got your headphones on and whatnot, this game can actually really fuck with you, I'm not gonna lie, speaking of which, if you thought that ending was, you know, trippy or confusing well as stated earlier there is a mid credit scene and that mid credit scene is going to start playing in five 
four, three, two, one. Enjoy. This part is just for you. After the haunting started, I got in touch with an organization that was still looking into what happened in Bright Falls. I went to their offices and something happened there. After I got home, I could suddenly remember everything. I remembered being trapped inside that lake, a dark ocean with, with echoes of myself, my, my, my fears, my photos inside a dark tide of, of madness the same events and images looping again and again and then i saw a light your light you dove in just as i swam out you never drowned and you're still there reaching out that is what the haunting is i can see you because i've been there too i chose to come back to the dark place that is why I put on this exhibition. I had to mislead you so that I could get you to where you needed to be. The only way out of your loop is destruction or ascension, light or dark. And we've covered the destruction part many times over. And we're getting to the ascension bit by bit. Time means nothing here. You'll still need to go through the loop. But I will keep showing you the images you need to see, the light you need to see, until you're ready. Ellen, I think we're getting close. <gasps> it's not a loop. It's a spiral. Okay, so I don't know what happened, but I just did my uh, commentary here, and none of it recorded, so I hope this records. I'm going to keep my commentary pretty brief at this point, uh, because uh, I said my piece, man. I talked for about 15 or so minutes, and none of that shit fucking recorded. I'm kind of irritated, but yeah, that uh, that ending, uh, if, that's, if you guys are even more tripped out i don't blame you this game has such a complicated story it's probably one of the most complicated stories i think i've ever experienced or done a playthrough for like period um but let me drink some water before my throat gets all clogged up <sighs> i have a big giant thing of water here that i'm drinking yeah this game um <laughs> I love this fucking game, man. I, I think this is probably one of the more mem memorable playthroughs I've had personally. I just, I can't say what it is about these types of, of stories, but I just am so attracted to stories like this that are so trippy and, and don't give you all of the answers, you know? The first Alan Wake game was a game that I enjoyed quite a bit. I could appreciate it for its like retro feel. And, and whatnot, and I remember getting really hooked on that game and wanting to know what was going on in the story, and I don't think I even fully pieced everything together in that game's story by the time I finally beat it, but when this game was announced, I was just so fucking excited to play it, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, where to even start? The gameplay is kind of a mixed bag for me. For the most part, I love the gameplay in this game. I love the combat. I love how intense it is. I like the clunkiness of the combat too. I think that also adds to the the thrill factor. You know, all these encounters, having to dodge at like just the right time to get out of the way of their attacks and whatnot and shine the light on them and everything. It just, it gives me a really heavy Resident Evil vibe and it makes me want to play those games, like replay those games, you know, the Resident Evil games, which I haven't played all of those games, but yeah, I mean, the whole dual protagonist thing, I was 
talking about this in my original uh, commentary that for some reason didn't record, but I love the way they handled the dual protagonist thing in this game way more than I uh, liked the way they did it in The Last of Us Part Two, which I know that's not a fair comparison to make. It's a completely different game, but here it's like, you know, it, we have two stories that are running on the, the same parallel track, as Skill Up put it in his review, and the stories are playing out at different times, you know, and it, it obviously makes it more confusing, but it also makes it way more enthralling and engrossing, in my opinion, and just interesting. Um, the Last of Us Part Two, they didn't do that. They didn't chop the parts, the two character swaps up properly enough it's like they wanted to do the hardest thing they wanted to tackle the hardest challenge like make you just fucking hate this bitch so badly and want her to fucking die after what she does to joel and then they force you to play as her for the whole last half of the game you can't go back to ellie if you get bored with abby because it's almost like they know in their minds that people are gonna fucking hate her and the only thing they could do to make people care about her is give us an entire story mode to play as her for it but and i just feel like this game handled the dual protagonist thing so much better by giving you the option to switch between alan and saga whenever you wanted of course the beginning and ends of their stories play out in specific ways and you do have to do it in the order that remedy intended but that whole middle section of the game man i was just enjoying the hell out of myself um I don't even know where to begin to piece this story together. I mean, it breaks, it, you know, breaking it down simply, Alan's trying to escape the dark place. Saga shows up in Bright Falls. Saga was written into the story to be the hero, and in order for her to do her job, play her part as the hero, the story has to have a dark ending, and that's when the whole, you know, the daughter, her daughter d drowning and all that, her being included in the story. All of that, that shit is just so confusing, but also just like so, again, interesting and intriguing. Um, there are so many elements of this story, like there's so many questions that I have, you know, like that I think I'm going to probably save until I get to the, the DLCs and, like, and see the real end of the story. But there are a lot of loose threads too with Warlandor, who I think is going to be the next big player. I'm not sure if Scratch is honestly dead, to be honest with you. I feel like he's still alive deep down. If Alan is still alive and Alice and all of them are still alive, Scratch still has to be alive. And then the whole, it's not a loop, it's a spiral thing is very intriguing to me because I watched a video on that and someone was basically saying that a spiral is different from a loop because, different than a loop because a spiral eventually leads to some kind of conclusion or ending. Whereas a loop is just a never-ending circle, basically, that just doesn't fucking stop. So, Alan, I do think, is going to escape from the dark place and is going to come out alive. I would love to see a third game, honestly, and I don't need them to take me anywhere new. I could explore Bright Falls for fucking ever, man. The environments in this game, the areas that you explore are just so satisfying. One of the things I do not like about the exploration, though, is the environments are so big, and yes, there is a sprint button in this game, but the characters still run incredibly slow. This is something that I didn't really show off that much because I wanted to cut all of that exploration, that late game exploration, down into one video, so it was pretty heavily edited, but... You know, in the previous Alan Wake game, they would let you drive around the environments and vehicles and stuff, and I kind of wish they did that with this game. Like, they let you drive around with your car and stuff. I mean, I don't know. I know this isn't no GTA, you know, but it, it still would have been more convenient to have the story do that, but whatever. They chose to do another thing entirely, and there were some late game bugs that I got into, some progression blocking bugs that really kind of irritated me. I'm suspecting they've patched them out now and like fixed them, but there were two bugs I experienced. Both of them were the same and both of them happened in like the end game. One of them happened when I was playing as Alan, one of them happened as Saga during all that late game exploration where I just froze and I could not move. No matter what buttons I pressed, no matter what I did, I couldn't move. And I had to like 
reload the saves, which by the way, the saves and checkpoints in this game are ass. If you play for 30 minutes without saving and you fucking die, too bad. You're gonna have to go back and play through all of that shit again, and it is very harsh and unforgiving, but um, I kind of got used to it in the end. Uh, explosive Allen, what the hell? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just... I could go on and on and on about how much I love this game, but I'm not going to because I feel like I would never get anywhere. Story's amazing, gameplay's a lot of fun, a little bit of an irritating things here and there, but I forgive it and I give it a pass because in the end, everything else, the the acting, the 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 scenes, the action, the you know, the horror, the suspense, there were definitely parts in this game that got under my skin and, and got me you know a little stressed out you know especially when playing as alan because you never know when those shadow figures are gonna fucking charge at you or attack you or what like you just you don't fucking know you know and i think that just adds to the fear factor and really puts you in his headspace too which is very interesting just there's so many things about this game i can praise to the moon and back but i'm not going to so Amazing fucking game, a masterpiece in my opinion. I'd give it a 10 out of 10. I don't even fucking care, dude. I know that is like the highest score I can give a game, and at this point, I'm still riding off the high from this, you know? It's a 10 out of 10. I fucking love this game, and I hope you guys who have been watching it enjoyed it, and maybe some of you in the future will come and watch this when it's all said and done. So I'm done talking for now. I'm going to let these credits play out and let you guys... Um, you know, see the rest of this. There's no more scenes that play out. It's just going to be credits. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please comment, like, subscribe, share this with your friends, please. And yeah, I will see you all on the next playthrough. Peace.
Thank you.